Hi, I'm Aaron Lichty and this is my K24 powered Miata. I'm the owner of the winning formula, um, and I'm also active in the day-to-day -day operations of the shop. Uh, and then when needed, I'll dig into the toolbox and, and, and grab a wrench again. Winning formula, when I was in my late teens, was the place to go for motorsports alignments. Uh, I had a Honda S2000 at the time uh, that I was very interested in doing time trial racing, though I wasn't uh, at a place in my driving uh, to do it competitively. And so I came to the winning formula to have the car set up uh, by the man. Um, and uh, I started going to uh, winning formula track days. Uh, the shop would host events back then. Um, and when I was at one of those events, the owner of the winning formula at the time uh, invited me to drive a spec Miata. I'd never driven a Miata before. I had an S2000. I was above Miatas. Um, and I drove the car, and it was awesome. Um, and uh, that was the first Miata I ever drove. And that's actually this car. It's a 1993 Mazda Miata that's mostly modified to compete in Grid Life's GLTC class. Uh, it's started its life as a spec Miata, like a lot of Miatas, uh, and then gradually um, got wilder from there. Spec Miata, as the name suggests, is a tightly controlled racing class only for Miatas or MX-5s. The intention is to provide racers the opportunity to compete in low-cost cars built with specified modifications to such things as tyres, suspension and weight. It is an excellent entry point into wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and provides a great platform to progress from, as Aaron has with his Miata. Um, so years later, uh, when I purchased the business from him, I made it contingent upon the car being sold uh, with the business. Um, at one point, I had a built Mazda motor uh, that proved inadequate for the class that we wanted to compete in. Uh, so we made the choice to move over to the Honda K-Series engine. The engine is a K24A2. Um, these come factory in 2006 to 2008 Acura TSXs. Um, I think the published horsepower on those cars is something like 210 wheel horsepower. This is actually an unopened engine, other than some changes we make to the, to the oiling system to suit the, the K-Miata conversion. Um, factory camshafts, factory piston, factory rod, factory crank, um, and it puts 225 horsepower to the wheels, which is pretty remarkable. A uh, big testament to Honda and what they've done with this engine. Um, we have a trim switch back here. It's mounted on the firewall. Um, in NASA racing, um, they allow you to have a trim switch, uh, but it can't be within reach of the driver. Um, technically, when you come off a racetrack and go to impound, where your rules are scrutinized, you're not supposed to open your hood or anything, so we think that's a a suitable location for it where it's out of reach of the driver, but changing for maps. Right now it's on full power, 195, 190, 185. It's as simple as that, uh, which is pretty damn cool. Back here we have our Haltech flex fuel sensor. Um, it's pretty fun to run the car on E85 for a lapping day, um, but it's actually something that I don't even think I ran it a single time like that last year because we were uh, more interested in the GLTC class with lower horsepower. The people behind Grid Life, the USA's touring circus of motorsport and music festival mashups, always wanted to bring the spectacle of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing to their successful event series. The Grid Life Touring Cup, or GLTC for short, does just that. With its huge variety of vehicles all brought to parity through power to weight limits, it is the perfect class for bringing ultra-close racing to the people. Uh, this car is about 180 horsepower and 2,400 pounds. Um, which probably doesn't sound very exciting to most people, but it's pretty exciting when you're in a group of 50 cars, you know, door to door at, at those speeds. I think it has the potential to be the best amateur racing we have in the country because it'll only be in one single class. You just, you dilute the talent on a race weekend when you have 12, 15 different classes. You have some good guys in Spec Miata, you have some good guys in Super Touring, you have some good guys in the German Touring Series, you have some good guys in American Iron. Um, when you do one rule set centered around power to weight, you kind of let all those guys come together. 
And thus far, that's how the series has worked. It's attracted people from other series. It's kind of like, it's like IROC for amateur racing, you know? 12 of racing's best equal Chevy IROC Camaros. Four different tracks. It's the International Race of Champions. Uh, we used uh, a lot of uh, components from a company called K Miata that pioneered this conversion in the Mazda chassis. Um, I think they did the first one five or six years ago. I thought it was interesting then, but in racing, reliability is absolutely huge. So as much as you may see something and think it's cool, you, you don't want to jump right on too early or else you have a bunch of DNFs, um, you know, a bunch, bunch of races that you didn't finish uh, for, for reliability issues. So we kind of watched with some, some interest as that company came out to develop those components. Um, and I actually got to see one on track, uh, driven by the owner of the company, uh, and it impressed me enough with the, its reliability that we, uh, we took the plunge. Yeah, this is a largely stock engine because we always knew we'd be detuning it for the racing class, but it makes about 225 horsepower to the wheels um, at full kill. Uh, and then, like I said, we cut it back to 180. There's ways you can cut the, the power back, and depending on how the racing class regulates those rules, um, you can cut your power back, so instead of having the, the nice sloped curve, you can have a flat curve across the entirety of your power band. And um, not only does that give you higher acceleration rate than what you would normally have with a, with a traditional power curve, but also makes the car a little bit easier to drive. You don't have to worry about revving the motor out all the time. You can kind of bog it down and you still have that horsepower and torque down there. We're using the Honda K24 engine in this Mazda, and we could have put that engine in the car and use the K24 wiring harness and, and Honda computer. There's a number of reasons why we chose to use a Haltech. Um, I think uh, first and foremost would be the drive-by-wire uh, throttle system that we have in the car. Um, so these are traditionally cable throttle operated. Um, and so we use a drive-by-wire throttle body. We use that in a, a number of different um, ways. We, we use it to detune the engine for the class legal horsepower. Um, we also use some other cool features on it, like we can auto blip, rev match our downshifts, um, things of that nature. Um, you can't do that with a factory Honda computer. We also have multiple maps on the car. So it's a power to weight class and its uh, compliance is tested on a dyno at the track. And what you'll find is that some dynos will read a couple horsepower higher than others, some a couple horsepower lower than others. Um, and so we always want to be legal for those compliance checks, but we want to make sure we're maximizing the power of the car as well. Um, so if we have the car classified uh, where it's legal to make 185 horsepower, we probably want to run a 180 horsepower map and give ourselves a little bit of room. If we go to a track like, uh, like a Road America with really long straightaways, there's some advantages to running the car heavier with more power. So we can put 100 pounds of ballast in the car and run six, seven more horsepower out of the engine. Um, again, can't do that with a factory ECU, but with the Haltech, it's very easy. And yet another reason why we chose Haltech is I think it's always important uh, to choose an ECU that your tuner is going to be comfortable and familiar with. Um, and what I've found is that really no matter where you're at, it seems like there's a competent tuner who's familiar with Haltech. Um, and that's one reason why I'm glad we use the brand, but a reason why we recommend it a lot. I get a lot of phone calls from people asking me for recommendations of tuners to tune this, that, or the other brand of ECU. And the truth is that some good tuners won't waste their time with subpar hardware. Um, and so it, it makes life easy having Haltech in the car. I think that's something a lot of people don't understand. Like, I, and I tell people that all the time, like you should call your tuner and have him lined out before you buy an ECU. So yes. I'm like, if you don't have him lined out, you should buy a brand that a lot of tuners like to work with. And honestly, and that's, that's a no, no smoke up your ass answer is, at Haltech seems to have a strong following with reputable tuners. It's plain to see that Haltech, Miatas and Honda K-Series engines go together to make a great combination. But for Aaron, the true winning formula is himself a racetrack and this particular Miata. The first time I drove the Miata, I was in here getting the S2000 aligned. I'd known Mike for two years at that point. I was maybe 20 or 21 and uh, Mike said, you ever drive a Miata? And I said, no, nah, I've never driven one. So he says, all right, come see me at the, you know, at the next event that, that we're at together and I'll, I'll stick you in one of the Miatas. I go out on track and it's the Friday test date before the NASA event. And so there's a bunch of spec Miatas there and I'm for my first time in a spec Miata. And as I'm going on track, I like, 
I may be wrong about this, but I felt like people were following me on track. Like it just seemed like I was surrounded by spec Miatas. And then I just started following like the last one in the, in the train around the track. And I was like, oh, this thing's like a slow little S2000. And I knew a couple of the guys that raced spec Miata. Like I knew how quick some of them were. And I like caught some of the quick guys. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll just stay behind this guy and see how it's going. And all of a sudden I'm like, I'm keeping up with him. I'm flying in this car. And I was like, I gotta get me one of these. So that was the first time I drove a Miata. It's been a log book race car. I've lost track. I mean, it may, be, it may be 16 seasons now. It's like unheard of. Like, it should have been totaled like four times over by now.